Hello and welcome to Calvary Chapel Kamaki. This is the home version. And we'll be going through the book of Romans. It's known as an epistle. And so this teaching will be mainly geared for those who have probably listened to the Sunday message, whether it's me or Ryan, as we go through Romans. But then I will present questions uh, on the video for those who would like to study even deeper, you know, dig into the word, let scripture interpret scripture so that application can come out of that uh, for you personally. And that's what we desire. We wanna grow closer to the Lord Jesus as he's speaking to our hearts through the spirit and through his word. And we want to have a closer connection with him. And so that's our heart's desire uh, with these videos. And so just as a, uh, a point of contact, if you're not receiving the Sunday morning messages, either for, from Ryan, which will be on a Google Drive audio uh, format, and that's gonna come to you either through WhatsApp uh, or on our Facebook page, Calvary Chapel Comic Key, uh, then, and if you would like those and you're not getting them, then let me know. And I will need to know probably uh, the format uh, as far as the media uh, that you prefer, whether it be email or WhatsApp or some other form that we might be able to get that to you. And so that's our desire that you would be able to listen to the teaching on Sunday mornings. And then these videos are geared with questions to follow up. Uh, the, these videos would be perfect for a small group study, you know, it would help you with questions to look up a little bit deeper or as a reminder of what was said on Sunday morning. Uh, so when I teach on Sunday morning, uh, Lord willing, I will continue to do a, a video that will be out on the YouTube channel uh, that will be connected through uh, our website at Calvary Chapel or on Facebook or WhatsApp or any other social media that you would prefer. Let me know. Uh, and so just stay connected that way. And so... Let me read from my Bible, which is not even a study Bible. It's a very basic Bible, but it does have a little um, introduction to the book of Romans. So I'll read that, and that would be a good um, starting point. Romans, Paul's greatest work, is placed among his 13 epistles. That could be a question. What is an epistle? In the New Testament, while the four Gospels present the words and works of Jesus Christ, Romans explores the significance of his sacrificial death. Using a question and answer format, Paul records the most systematic presentation of the doctrine in the Bible. Romans is more than a book of theology, it is also a book of practical exhortation. The good news of Jesus Christ is more than facts to be believed, it is also a life to be lived, a life of righteousness befitting the person justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So that was a mouthful. But Romans is a very important book, as all the rest in the Bible. It's one that has affected many great uh, men and women in history. Uh, for example, Martin Luther uh, would say something like this, that uh, every believer in Christ should read the whole book of Romans every day. You know, sit down one sitting, read through it. I've tried that, I've done that uh, for a while, and that, that did impact me, but we don't need to be legalistic or anything as far as what we're trying to say here. But it is a very important book, and it answers a lot of questions. Now, I read in, in the introduction that Paul uses a question and answer format, sometimes, He'll, or often he'll ask, ask a question and then answer it right away. So that's the way he writes, and it's, it's something to be aware of. And so uh, in the first two teachings, uh, we've made it through chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Uh, Ryan did an excellent job uh, with the introduction, and he gave a lot of facts and a lot of information. Now, if you have a study Bible, uh, you're going to find out a lot of information right at the beginning. Open up your study Bible to Romans, and you're going to find out uh, when most Bible the theologians think it was written, where it was written from, uh, who it was written to, what was happening in Paul's life, you know, uh, where did he write it from? Uh, and so if you listen to the teaching on Sunday, you'll have that answer. But find out where was Paul when he wrote 
this epistle to the Romans, the church in Rome, you might say. And, and so I have a little notebook. I've been uh, keeping some notes so that I can come up with some questions for these videos. It's not in depth as much as it could be, but I just wanted this to be something that if you desire to dig in a little bit deeper, find out things on your own, then you can do that and enjoy that. Especially our small home groups, uh, you know, these videos can be, you show up at a home Bible study and these could be questions that you can bring with you. And so, um, Ryan made the point that when Paul's writing, he uses the word God often, but he used, he told us what the Greek word is for God. That could be a question for you to look up. What is that? And, and in his teaching, he mentioned how many times the word God is used in the Bible, uh, but specifically in the New Testament as far as Greek, and then how many times the word God is used in the book of Romans. So you could go back to the first audio and you can find those answers or on your own, you, you might have those answers in your own resources or you can even, since we're in the information age in history, you can Google a lot of things and find out quite a bit. And so let me read verses 1 through 7 in Romans chapter 1, and then we'll go from there. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Now, so right away there's some questions that come up in the first two uh, verses. Uh, what is a bondservant? What would be the Greek word for that? What does it mean? Um, so we have in English, Jesus Christ. That's not his first and last name. What are those names, uh, first of all, in the Greek? And then how could it be translated in Hebrew? Um, so it's, Paul says that he was an apostle. What does apostle mean? And the word separated is actually connected very much with this man named Paul. What was Paul's uh, name before it was uh, Paul? It was a Hebrew name. Most of you would already know. Verse 2, which he promised before through his holy prophets in the holy scriptures. Uh, listen to the audios and you're going to find lots of information about uh, just some reference points of how many times uh, were things promised even in the Holy Scriptures through prophets especially? Verse 3, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord. The word Lord is a very significant word in connection with Jesus our Savior. He must be our Lord. What does Lord mean? Who was born, that is Jesus, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the re resurrection from the dead. When, when Jesus not only took the sin of the world upon himself, uh, because we couldn't get rid of it our, on our own, uh, God in his love sent his one and only Son to take care of our sin problem. He took all sin upon himself, and he experienced the wrath of his Father uh, in uh, the point where all sin was judged perfectly because of who Jesus is, uh, it says that, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So Jesus not only took care of the sin problem, but he defeated death, our number one enemy. For those of us in Christ now, with our faith in his finished work, we don't fear death. Verse five, through him, we have received grace. Grace, very important word. In scripture what is grace what would be the Greek word for that uh, and by the way these are these could be rhetorical questions or these could be questions that you're gonna look up I don't expect you to give me the answers I'm praying that you'll on your own find them out and then really grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ but what is grace and it says we have received grace and apostleship so you've already been asked to find out well what does apostle mean but there's a reason for all of that, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. There's this idea that everything that we do, everything that uh, we're now a part of in Jesus is for his glory. 
and it's to help others. It's no longer about us. Verse 6, among whom you also are called of Jesus Christ. So we have this calling to all who are in Rome, beloved. Uh, that's a very wonderful word in Scripture. What we're called beloved. What would be the Greek word of that? And what is the Greek root word of this word beloved? But that's who we are uh, of God called to be saints. Saints uh, has a very specific Greek word. But I'll tell you right now that Greek word means to be separated. In other words, we're being um, now transformed for a purpose. It's not for our glory. It's for the glory of God but so that we can be functional in the church of God, which is his body. So it's written to all who are in Rome. Then if the verse seven finishes with grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we can make the point that we can't have peace of God until we experience grace from God. Grace and peace. Grace first and then we experience peace. We find out uh, some very important things if we just study a little bit. Let Scripture interpret Scripture. Let, let these verses take you to other places in Scripture and connect the dots that way. If you don't understand something in one verse, let other verses come alongside of that and open your eyes spiritually. And so that's a little snapshot of where we are so far in Romans. Romans is a uh, very important book, as I've mentioned, and it's very deep. It's full of theology, the study of God. It's full of doctrine, the teachings of God. It's, it's full of information that, okay, we know about Christ and what he did, but now what? It answers questions like that. And so as we progress now with these videos, we pray that we'll all be growing in uh, our connection with Jesus. Uh, you know, and even as we're following Jesus, sometimes we can break fellowship with the Holy Spirit as we make bad choices. It's, it's a picture of the Garden of Eden uh, when Adam and Eve sin and God is searching for his creation. Adam, where are you? I miss you. I desire fellowship with you. And so books like Romans help uh, helps us to understand that we can have this connection with the Lord. And even when we uh, break fellowship, he's always there with open arms. And so all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're gonna find that out in chapter three. And the wages of sin is death. But see, Jesus took care of that problem uh, by a finished work on the cross. So, so be reminded that we're never able to point fingers in judgment toward anyone else. We were all sinners. We were all separated from a perfect God. Uh, no one can ever say, well, I was good enough to go to heaven without Jesus dying for me and taking care of my sin problem. All of us, all of us have sinned. And so... Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, I'm excited to go through the book of Romans in this format with questions. I'm praying that it's going to be a blessing to you. I don't want to overwhelm you. I just want to uh, maybe be a blessing as far as some possible questions. Now, you can come up with your own questions, uh, and I invite you to do that. Ask yourself questions as you're going through. You know, who was uh, writing this? Who was it written to? What was happening during the time it was written. Uh, you know, what is the purpose of the writing of it? And so all those type questions, very healthy, and it's, it's fun to, to dig in like that. So be blessed by this, and uh, until next time, God bless.